Hi everybody and welcome to Fab Tax. I'm Rosemary and in today's video I have some patriotic rustic decor DIYs inspired by the Pottery Barn. I have some faux wood Americana decorative houses and a real wood painted American flag. So let's jump right in. I'm going to start with the little Americana houses and I'm going to construct them in the same way I made these little faux wood houses last Christmas and that is from cardboard cartons. You know the kind that milk or half and half or lemonade or other beverages come in. Even Hungry Jack potatoes come in these little cartons. They come in different sizes from pint to quart to half gallon so you can make large, medium and small variations of this craft. To start I took a half gallon container and I removed the lid but I'm going to hold that aside because that's actually going to be used in a upcoming uh, DIY. And then I just opened up the top of the container. And now I'm going to remove that little plastic spout um, on the one side there. And so to do that, I kind of just pressed down around it and kind of got my nails in between the two uh, edges there. And then you just kind of push it and uh, pull it out and just be careful because uh, it can rip the cardboard. So um, if you're just careful, it'll just pop right out and you'll be able to remove it easily. When saving containers for future projects, my suggestion would be to do the step as soon as you are done with the contents. So for example, if, when you're finished with the milk, um, open up the container and wash and rinse and just store like this until you're ready to use. So you can make sure it's cleaned and you don't have any unpleasant surprises. When the container is open, you can still see the creases in a triangle formation. So what I did is I just went and took a pair of scissors and cut along that crease um, all the way through to the top of the carton. And then I just repeated the process on the other side. Now I'm just going to take those flaps and fold them in and then reattach um, the top of the carton and you'll see how it makes a little house shape. Now before gluing everything in place, you may want to add some weight to the bottom of the carton, especially if it's going to be in a place where it could easily be knocked over. And so I just added some of these river rocks from the Dollar Tree, just glued them in and put like two or three in to hold it down. Now I'm going to just secure everything back in place with the hot glue. So I just take that little triangular flap and pull it down and put some glue along the edges there. Then again, I refold the uh, carton, this time with the flap out, the little triangular flap out, and then adhering it to the sides. And you'll see it on the other side a little better as to where the flaps were when I secured the triangle to the side. So from this side, you can see it a little better. So the two flaps go behind the triangle. The glue is going to go on the edges. And then those flaps just kind of fold um, one on top of the other. And then the glue gets adhered, um, adheres to those sides. And then I just went back with some hot glue along the top and secured it there. So this is what the carton should look like once all the sides have been glued in place. And then it was ready to paint and I used some of this uh, ultra matte uh, white spray paint, uh, but you could also use brush paint as well. I also wanted to make a smaller house, so I'm going to just take another half gallon container and mark off three inches from the bottom all the way around the container. Then I'm going to just go back with a utility knife and cut along that line all the way around. 
To give the carton some weight, as well as help keep the shape of the carton, I want to take some Dollar Tree Jenga blocks and I'm going to just add those to the inside corners of the carton. So I'm going to just take some hot glue, I'm going to put one uh, to the one corner, and then on the second piece I'm going to uh, glue both the back and the side, and then I will just attach it in, creating a 90 degree angle. And again, that's just holding everything in uh, place and also adding some weight to the bottom of the carton. For this smaller house, I am going to want to cover that back hole where the spout was. So I just cut a little square of the bottom piece and then I'm going to just glue, apply some glue to the little square and then just put it in place on the carton to cover that hole. Then I'm going to finish off the top as I did in the other house. Just kind of fold those flaps back and under and then glue everything in place. For the paint, I will be using Waverly Ocean for the blue, Waverly Lacquer for the red, and a mix of Waverly Ivory along with some regular white craft paint for the white portion. And so I'll be painting the body of the house with white and then the roof with red for the small house. And then I will be doing white on the bottom with blue on the roof for the large house. In order to give the roof a little texture and also to cover some of those gaps and holes, I'm going to take a piece of this mesh bag from a bag of onions and I'm going to just lay it over the top. I'm going to just kind of cut it down to size and then I'm going to take some spray adhesive and just spray the roof with the spray adhesive and then put the piece of uh, onion bag right back on and once that dries a little bit I'm going to go back with some scissors and just trim it off. Then I will paint another coat of the red paint on top and then I'm going to do the exact same process for the blue house as well. Next, I'm going to make the chimney for the blue house by gluing together three of the Dollar Tree Jenga blocks. I will also use this as a sort of makeshift stamper, which you'll see in a few minutes. But first, I want to add a little distressing to the bottom portion of the house. So I'm going to do that with some of this nutmeg colored um, craft paint. And I'm going to do it both by using a, a dry brush across the surface just dipping my brush into the paint, removing the excess. I'm going to just go around uh, the body of the house, just kind of lightly going over, uh, creating some light brown strokes across the surface of the, um, of the house. And then also there along the uh, corners, the little edges, and I'll get that even a little better with the paper towel. So just go in again, dabbing, and then just creating some uh, distressing on the corners as if this was a real wood house and it had gotten worn over time. To create the windows, I'm going to take some of this caramel colored and some of this saffron yellow colored craft paint. I'm going to actually be using the two of them. I put way too much of the yellow there on the side, uh, but just need a small amount. And I'm going to, and this is where I'm going to use the chimney now as a stamper. So first I just wanted to kind of stroke those two colors through and then I want to try to get my stamper, my little makeshift stamper there. It's going to be doing double duty. First we'll act as the stamper and then we'll have it um, paint it brown and, and create the chimney for the house. But before I did that, I realized that I wanted to bring the roof line down a little bit. And so I didn't want to place any tape there on the surface of the house because the paint as you can see in other shots was really still wet. I was trying to do this quickly. And so I was, you know, some, sometimes I was, you know, the, the paint was coming right up, uh, off as I was holding it. So definitely let them dry better than I did, uh, before proceeding from step to step. But, um, I knew that tape would definitely be a problem. So I just used a little piece of cardboard to bring that roof down a little bit. And then after that, I took uh, my ruler and just marked off at the two inch, four inch and six inch uh, lines so that I could create uh, lines across to know where I would need to place my windows. 
and then I was ready for my little stamp style windows and I just took my wood block and placed it there between the two paint colors so I wanted both paint colors on the bottom of my wood block and then I proceeded to make my windows now you'll see that you know it wasn't a perfect stamp uh, it, as long as I was getting the two colors on though and some of the paint from both colors and it was in somewhat of a rectangular shape um, I was good to go because then I was going to just go back with my paintbrush and that enabled me to get that kind of blur of the colors as well uh, by using the paintbrush and so I'm just trying to get the paint on again in some type of rectangular format and now I'm going to go back with my paintbrush and uh, you know, continue the, to finish them off. And then to create the door, I just took some of my red paint on a skinny foam brush and just painted a rectangle straight down. Now I did need to do a couple of coats to get it just right, but um, that's all there was to it. So then once I was done creating all of my windows, I was able to go back with my little stamper and paint it now with this nutmeg brown paint and get it ready for its next life as the chimney on the little blue house. To attach the chimney, I went back with some scissors and cut through the netting on the little hole at the top of the blue house. And then you can see how the block now will fit in perfectly. And I just took some of the hot glue and added that to the sides and bottom of my wood block and then just placed it right there in the hole, held it in place until that glue was set. And then here you can see the finished project. On the left hand side is the inspiration piece, which is the Pottery Barn Americana Wood Decorative House. That was originally $49.50 on sale now for $29.50. And then on the right hand side is the recreated version using a milk carton and that cost pretty much the price of paint. To create the windows on the little red roof to house, I just used a Sharpie marker. Now this could be measured out the way I did the other. I'm kind of just freehanding it here again in the interest of time. Uh, but if you want to do this more precisely, I would just measure them out and make sure that they're all even. Um, or you can do it this way and it kind of adds to the rustic appeal. Or at least that's what I'm going to say. I'm gonna, it makes it more rustic that way. So anyway, um, I just went ahead and made four little squares for the windows and then I'm going to create the rectangular door in the same way I did with the red one, just painting down a blue strip. And then I'm going to just go back with some of the blue paint to create a window frame as well as some gridding inside the window. And then here is the finished small house. On the left again is the Pottery Barn inspired piece which was originally $29.50, now $17.50, and then the recreated version on the right-hand side made from a milk carton. To create the flag, I'm going to be using this Dollar Tree sign that I had from my previous uh, video, DIY, and I'm going to just be using the back. Now, I'm also going to be using some of these shims. Now, I used these in my previous video as well, and you can get these at Lowe's 42 for $4.98, they're about 12 cents each. These are the cedar ones, so they have a rough surface. The pine ones have a smooth surface, um, but these are something that's used in construction for doing wood framing, but they also do great for making crafts. And so as you can see, they have uh, the shape that it's like a wedge shape, so it has a thick end and then a thin end. So um, what we wanna do in this case though, I'm gonna put all of the thick ends down to the left-hand side. In the previous video, I did alternate them thin and thick, um, and it does create a great weathered type sign. It really adds to the dimensions and appeal. But in this case, I am going to put them all in one direction for the flat. Then I'm going to take each shim and I'm going to tape off the top half of each of the seven shims. For the paint, I will again be using the Waverly Ivory as well as Waverly Lacquer for the red and then Waverly Ocean for the blue. 
and I'm also going to be mixing the ivory with some of uh, the white craft paint just because I wanted to brighten up that uh, ivory paint a little bit. It was a little too dark. Next, I'm going to paint the bottom half of all of my shim sticks. Once the paint has dried, I'm going to remove the tape and then just place it on the bottom half and now covering the white portion. I'll then line up my shims again with the thick side to the left and I will just go down what will be the red lines by the count of four red lines. And at that point, I'm going to just mark off six inches. This is gonna be the blue section where the stars will go. And then I'm gonna just draw a line there and then add a piece of tape again to the left-hand side of that line. Then in order to separate the shims back out again, I'm going to just uh, take a utility knife and cut along the tape there, separating all of the shims. Next, I'm going to go in with some of that red paint to paint the top half of the shims. And I didn't mention it before, but I am doing a dry brush, both for the white and the red. And so I'm just um, taking some of the paint, getting most of it off. And when I am painting, I'm painting towards the middle with the heaviest strokes. I wanna try and keep the edges as well as the ends um, a little bit free of the paint or a little bit splotchier with the paint because that's where the distressing would have been if this was in fact a real distressed wood painted flag. So I'm kind of keeping the paint to the, to the tape and I did that on both the red and the white sides. And then once that paint is dry, I can go ahead and remove the tape. And, and now I do want to put the shims back in place. Again, thick side to the left. And I'm going to put the uh, ones that I had taped off for the blue section at the top, of course. And I want to, at this stage, replace my tape now to the other side of that line. So where the red paint is and um, just line it up there with the edge of the red paint. And that's going to be able to create the space that I can uh, paint the blue section in. Now, before I do that, I am going to paint the end of each one of those shims with the white paint. So everything that had just kind of half white needs to go back and I'll paint that again with a dry brush of the white paint. Before doing any more painting though, I do want to glue my pieces in place and I'm gonna just use this Type Bond multi-purpose glue, but any wood glue uh, or the hot glue would work here, although I would suggest maybe um, a wood glue or something just so you can move the pieces around um, once you get everything in place. It might not be lined up correctly or spaced correctly, so you probably do want to use a wood glue. Um, and then once uh, everything is in place and all of my white side has been painted white, I'm going to go ahead with some of these Dollar Tree stickers and start placing my stars in place. And so again, I'm going to go to the bottom of that red uh, fourth red line and then I'm going to just mark off at the half inch spot there. You see me going all the way across the ruler on the half inch uh, of the ruler. And then I'm going to start placing my stars and I'm going to use those markers to create where I'm putting um, the first row of stars. And so I'm going to kind of put the uh, two bottom points of the stars kind of straddling that line on the bottom. And then up from there, I'm going to do... Um, well, let's see, how can I explain this? I'm going to do stars in between those. So that will be the next row will go in between. And then um, the third row will start uh, directly then above the first row. And then these will go for the, um, the stars that are kind of lined up straight. Those will go uh, five up. And then the ones in between will be four up. And then that way you'll be able to get in all 50 stars. And then once all my star stickers were in place, I just added a piece of tape to the bottom portion and then proceeded to paint that section with the blue paint. Once that was dry, I just went back and removed the painter's tape as well as all of the star stickers. Next, I wanted to go back and enhance some of that distressing. So when I had done the dry brushing, I left, as I mentioned, some of the spots more bare than others. 
but it didn't really have the contrast that I was looking for. So I decided to go back with some of this caramel paint and uh, just a dry brush in those areas to create a little bit more of an accentuated distressing. Now, I'm not sure if you noticed it, but this flag is incorrect in that it should have ended with a red stripe. And because of the width of the shims, it has, of course, a white stripe at the bottom. Now, this might not bother you and you could be fine with that. But if um, it was something that you wanted to correct, you could, of course, cut the shim in half. And um, that would have ended it there with a red stripe. Now, alternately, and this is just kind of what it would look like, right, with the red stripe instead. Now, alternately, you could do something at the bottom, and that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to add a quote. Now, since I don't have a blue paint marker, I'm going to just use this skewer left over from another project that I was painting beads on, and uh, or I could just use a pencil, and I'm going to use them kind of like a quill pen where the paint is the ink. Then I just printed off a quote from my computer in about the size that would fit there at that bottom space. And I'm going to just scribble on the back of this piece of paper. Now, I, you really actually need to scribble harder than this. It really does have to have a lot of the uh, pencil graphite on the back of the paper in this instance because the surface is so coarse that you really do need to not only get a lot of the pencil graphite on the back, but also press down really hard to get that transfer. And then I just went back with my makeshift quill pen fashioned from a skewer with some leftover beads on it and just proceeded to use it like a paint marker and go over all of the letters. And then to create a little border around the quote, I just went back with some paint and just placed some dots all the way around on the top and the bottom. And then here is the finished project. And again, the Pottery Barn inspired piece is on the left hand side and the recreated version is on the right. Now, of course, the Pottery Barn is a much larger flag. It's about three feet by two feet, while the recreation measures about 15 inches by nine inches. It's not as large, but it is still sizable and does make a great accent piece to a mantle, hutch or serving area. Well, I hope you have enjoyed these Pottery Barn inspired patriotic rustic decor DIYs. If you enjoyed the video, please remember to give a thumbs up and please share with any family and friends you think would also enjoy this video. If you have a favorite or plan on making any of these, please let me know in the comments below. And if you're not already a subscriber and you like what you see, please consider subscribing. We'd love to have you join the family. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time on FabTax where we're putting the extra and ordinary one DIY at a time.